Hi, I'm Tyler Fultz. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. If you like this video, please give me a like down below, and go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. If you didn't like this video, please leave me a comment down below as to what I can do better. I'm always looking to improve. Today we're going to be looking at another Kurtzkazat video on The Last Human, A Glimpse into the Far Future. Let's take a look. The future of humanity seems insecure. Rapid climate change, political division, our greed and failings make it hard to look at our species with a lot of optimism, and so many people think our end is in sight. But humans have always thought they lived in the end times. Every generation assumes they're important enough to witness the apocalypse, and then life just goes on. This is a problem because it leads... That's true, it does seem like every 20 years or so there's somebody, or probably more often than that, someone who brings up some prophecy or something about the world <laughs> falling apart. <laughs> ...the short-term thinking and prevents us from creating the best world for ourselves and our descendants. What makes this worse is that we may actually be living at an extremely critical moment in human history. To understand why, let's look at the temporal window of humanity and ask, when will the last human be born? And how many people will there ever be? These sorts of estimates come with a lot of uncertainties, so please take them with a gigantic grain of salt. To get a sense of how many people there will be, let's see how many people have already lived. Modern humans arose some 200,000 years ago. They were uniquely good at making tools, telling stories, thinking abstractly, planning and working together in large groups beyond their close family. Still, there were not that many of us. Surpluses of food were scarce, survival was hard, life expectancy was low. It took us 150,000 years to grow to a population of 2 million. Improvements were gradual and eventually led to the agricultural revolution, arguably the biggest change in our history. This was when our numbers really started growing. It took 10,000 more years to get... It's the whole 10,000 BCE, just adding 10,000 to what the current year year is for how Kurtzkazat does their calendar. I think I understand it now. 300 million. But that increase was dwarfed by the Industrial Revolution. In 1800, there were a billion of us. The human population doubled in just 120 years, and then again in 50. Today, we number around 8 billion. In total, over the last 200... Always fascinating how fast it just rocketed up through a very short fraction of our history. ...thousand years, about 117 billion humans were born and lived, and 109 billion also died. Which means that about 7% of all humans that ever lived are alive right now. As many as were born in the first 150,000 years of human history. Every minute, 270 babies join the party. But there aren't just more people. Never before have we been as healthy and well-off, or lived longer. With growing living standards, our birth rates collapsed. The UN estimates that around the year 2100, we will hit our population peak and there will be 125 million people born each year. It's pretty unlikely that birth rates will stay stable forever, but let's pretend to make our thought experiment simpler. How many people there will be in the future depends on when our species will die out. And here, we find a lot of uncertainties. We are able to destroy ourselves through our own inventions, but we are also able to find solutions to avert catastrophic risk. We can change the direction of planet killer asteroids, but we've also invented nuclear weapons. We discovered antibiotics, but also can- Can also change the direction of planet killer asteroids with nuclear weapons. Just thought I'd put that into perspective. ...diseases across the globe in a matter of days. Our industrial system gives us an incredible standard of living, but also changed the atmosphere in the process. It's very hard to say if human ingenuity will prolong or shorten our species' lifespan. If things go badly, our end could come suddenly. But if we manage to avoid that, we could conceivably stick around. 
I'm going to guess option one based on what we've already observed throughout our history and just that little graph that they just showed us about um, how much our population has grown and how we're actually kind of leveling off and hitting our carrying capacity, at least on Earth. It's just fascinating to think about this stuff. For a long time. So every day we don't destroy ourselves may mean life for an unfathomable number of humans. How many people are we talking about? It depends on how far our species is going to expand. Scenario 1. Humans will never leave Earth. If we stay on our home planet, a good metric to look at is the extinction rate of animals that we get from the fossil record. The average lifespan of mammalian species is in the region of 1 million years, with some surviving up to 10 million years. Our close relative Homo erectus survived for about 1.9 million years. Let's be conservative and assume that humans will survive for a million years, which leaves us 800,000 more years to dawdle away. Assuming a stable birth rate of 125 million people each year, this means there are roughly 100 trillion humans waiting to be born. 850 times greater than the number of people that have ever lived. This would make everybody alive today only 0.008% of all people that will ever live. Think about where- That's just amazing. We're this tiny snapshot throughout all of our history and all of our future leaves you. Instead of putting you at the end of the chaotic mess that was our past, it would mean you live at the very beginning of something big. The start of the human story rather than the end. Doesn't this feel incredibly different? And now, consider that this may be an extremely pessimistic estimate. If we match the survival time of the most successful mammals, then our future numbers rise to 1.2 quadrillion people that have yet to be born. And even this seems far from our potential. As the sun slowly gets hotter and brighter, Earth will remain habitable for about 500 million years, giving so many more potential people the chance to become actual people. And now, let's begin to think big. Scenario 2. Humans will leave Earth. I find it highly unlikely that the scenario that we exist as a species for millions of years, that we do not leave Earth. We've already sent probes away from Earth and walked on the surface of the moon. In the, grand, in the order of magnitude of millions of years, think of how much we can do in that amount of time frame. Let me know what you think about that in the comments, but I think scenario one's pretty unlikely. We went from humans worshipping the moon to humans walking on it, so who knows how much further we can go. If we don't die out within the next few hundred years, ideas that seem outlandish right now become serious considerations. If we believe that we have a chance of surviving for maybe millions of years, then we could expand onto the other planets or into our own artificial worlds. Life needs three things, a surface, resources and energy. Our sun provides energy for billions of years, and there is so much water and material floating in the asteroid and Kuiper belt that we could sustain many times our current population. Instead of living on planets, we could decide to construct our own artificial worlds and habitats. With resources and energy so abundant, we could try out different types of society and ways of life. An interconnected civilization spanning the solar system would create the basis of existence for an absurd number of individuals, orders of magnitude more than if we stick to Earth, even if we only existed for a few million years. This future... That's a beautiful graphic to show it. <laughs> ...doesn't have to be grim and dark as science fiction likes to paint it. With quadrillions of people waiting to be born, we will have billions of doctors working on curing cancer, billions of problem solvers working on ending poverty, and billions of video game developers making life fun. <laughs> more humans may actually mean more progress. Another upside of leaving It has in our past. <laughs> Earth and spreading out is that it becomes much harder for us to become extinct as you need a solar system-wide catastrophe to catch everybody. So aside from nearby supernovae or gamma ray bursts, humanity would be relatively safe from extinction, maybe for billions of years. If we manage to survive for that long, slow evolution or genetic engineering might split us into multiple species, 
or we might intentionally keep ourselves the same as we are now. So to account for that, we'll just talk about people from now on, instead of humans. Okay. That's an excellent point, I'm glad they clarified. <laughs> now let's think really big. Scenario 3, people leave the solar system. As enormous as the solar system is, it is just one star system among billions in the Milky Way. If future people can colonize, say, 100 billion stars and live there for 10 billion years, with each generating 100 million births per year, then we can expect something like a hundred octillion lives to be lived in the future. This is a one with 29 zeros. A hundred... Okay, there you go. Appreci appreciate them using scientific notation at this point. <laughs> thousand trillion trillion. We can spin this up as much as we like. The Andromeda Galaxy will merge with the Milky Way, adding another trillion stars for us to settle. Red dwarfs stay active for up to a trillion years, and future civilizations might even find energy for their habitats around black holes. A sufficiently advanced civilization of our descendants might even try to reach other galaxy groups. While these numbers are mind-blowing, they may underestimate the number of unborn people by many orders of magnitude. If we divide the total energy available in a galaxy by the average energy needs of a single person, then we get a tridecillion potential lives. A million, trillion, trillion, trillion potential people. Conclusion. Hopefully what's become evident is that if we don't kill ourselves in the next few centuries or millennia, almost all humans that will ever exist will live in the future. Which brings us back to us in the present. We exist at a high point in human history, with incredible possibilities at our grasp. Technological, environmental, and societal. What we do matters for all the people who do not exist yet. So while it's not on vogue to think about humanity's long-term future with optimism, or to think about it at all, maybe this has given you a bit of perspective. If we screw up the present, so many people may never come to exist. This kind of goes hand in hand with both their video on egoistic altruism and their video on the uh, Kardashev scale. and. Those are concepts that I find absolutely fascinating. Um, if you haven't checked out their videos yet, please, I highly encourage you to watch those too. But this is, seems like it's putting everything together in this video, in this beautiful, beautiful concept of expanding throughout the universe and for the good of all humankind. It's, it's amazing. Quadrillions of unborn humans are at our mercy. Even if we go with fairly conservative estimates, the unborn are by far the largest group of people and the most disenfranchised. Somebody who might be born in a thousand or even a million years deeply depends on us today for their existence. This is why it's important to think about the distant future and why our presence is so crucial, why it matters what we do today. One day, the last human will be born. We don't know when. But if we change our perspective from us living at the end of the human story to us living at the very beginning, we can not only build a wonderful world for us and for them, but also for countless numbers of others. Huge announcement. We're launching Kurzgesagt in six more languages. Man, what a message. Um, so next time you're feeling down on yourself, think of the many tradecillions of people that depend on you doing whatever it is that is important to you right now. <laughs> uh, that's some beautiful, heavy stuff. Um, let me know what you think of this down in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.